I'll let this gentleman introduce himself. He's a new friend. We just met today. Yes, sir. His name is Darrell. No relation. But he's going to tell you a little bit about the work that he does, not only with Junior Achievement, but through his foundation. Darrell, let's kick it off a little bit. Tell the young folk, first of all, where are you from? Sure. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. Darrell Davis is my name. How you guys doing this afternoon? Good. Good. Y'all on the same wavelength? Good. Anybody like really excited to be here? Yes. Just, just a couple people? I mean, I heard Doc ask who's, you know, got aspirations of playing professional football. Any of you guys got aspirations of playing professional football? Yes. Few of us? Okay. Well, just to give you a little background, I'm from Chicago. I came to Howard University. And my story is probably like a lot of you guys. How many of you guys just have loads and loads of money at home, in the coffers, in the backyard, just all over the place? Just two of us, right? See, I didn't come here with a whole lot. I came to Howard University, and I had a dream and a passion, just like you, to play football. Any of you guys have that same dream, that same passion? Yeah, so I was all city. I was an all-star and all that good stuff. But I wasn't the best player. And I had to walk on to Howard University's team. And that was a unique experience. Anybody have, have that experience? Like, oh, you're getting letters left and right, right? Yeah. yeah, see, that's good. I didn't have that experience. So the unique thing for me was I needed to work to demonstrate. My coach was Steve Wilson, former NFL player. And when I sat down with Coach Wilson, he said, why should I let you play on my team? You're from the North. You don't know how to work in the North. Now, I'd never been told that before. I was 18. I didn't know, what do you mean I don't know how to work? I thought I knew how to work. But I had to demonstrate that and I was able to make that team. And uh, I didn't go on to play professional football. I was an engineering student. And what I learned is the value of interacting with a community. How many of us know that your football, your team and your school, that's a community, right? It's, isn't it a part of your community? Yes. yes? Yeah, and so community engagement, you guys are already engaged in. So it's really just understanding that it doesn't stop. Your community engagement, you know, in the locker room, y'all have a certain relationship and a certain rapport, things that you do in the locker room, right? Yes. And there's certain things that you don't do in the locker room, right? Yes. Or you're kind of weird. Why is that dude looking at me? You know, so, right? It's okay to laugh. <laughs> so there's a certain community in the locker room. There's a certain community on the field, right? And there's a certain community in and around your school campus. If somebody messes with another football player, that's a problem for the whole team, right? Yes. Exactly. And so you all already understand community engagement. And for me, I just learned how it just extends from what we do professionally, what we do vocationally, some of the things that we want to do that we like to do, but not necessarily are we getting paid for or getting grades for. Do y'all have any of those things that you like to be good at that you don't get a grade for? Anybody? How many of y'all play Madden? All right, you want to be good at that, right? Y'all play tournaments? Man, I'll crush you. Don't y'all do that kind of stuff? It's okay. Your parents, they already know. Your coaches know you play Madden. Mm -hmm. So there are things that you're going to do that you already do that you want to be really, really good at that you may not get a paycheck per se for. You might not get graded for, but it matters in the whole equation, right? You all have a playbook? Yes? Sort of? Kind of? All right, there's certain techniques that you're going to employ in your position, right? If you're a running back, how many running backs in the room? All right, it's certain techniques that you're going to employ as a running back, right? Certain terminology. So if you like here, or if you take, what do you call it, a duck step, jab step, different things like that, right? What y'all call it? Jab step. Yeah, so it's a counter step. So you all understand, it's certain terminology and lingo. Those things, you just translate those things into your community service. And so what you do on the field, what you do as players in the locker room, what you do when you leave the field, when you get home, you know, how you engage with your parents, your siblings, your, you know, uh, immediate community, all of those things are a part of your equation. How many of you all know that your team and your coach and your coaching staff has a philosophy? Do they have a philosophy? Share that philosophy. What's your team's philosophy? Some of them are defensive oriented. Some of them say we run a West Coast offense. What do y'all call it? Spread, right? So there's an approach that. Give me another one. 
So we got spread. What else we got in the back? What's, what's your all's team philosophy? Is it defense oriented if we don't let them score? Or is it offense, we're going to run up the score? Hello? All right, so here's my point. Everybody tune in. Here's the point. As a football player, as a part of a team, and as a part of an organization, you have a philosophy that you either buy into. If you buy into the philosophy, you get to play, right? If you don't agree with the coach's philosophy, and you are running back and it's like, man, I don't get 20 touches a game, I'm not playing. That's a problem, right? If the coach says you're not going to get 20 touches a game, and you want to play for the team, you're going to do what the team needs of you to win. Is that correct? Yes. So if you need to come out of the backfield and catch a pass, that's how we're going to get the balls in your hands, running backs, where are my running backs at? I can talk to running backs because that's the position I play. You're going to do what it needs to be done to help the team win, right? Here's the thing. Community service, as our good friend from Coca-Cola shared with you, it's a part of the overall equation. It's a part of your philosophy. And as we're discussing this with you all, it's not just about being successful on the football field or only in the classroom. How many of us want to be successful all the way around? Can I see your hands? Ex exactly. So to be successful all the way around, it, it helps to have a successful philosophy, do you think? So they say if a team is winning, generally they say the team and the coaching staff has a winning philosophy. Like Doc said on the stage, if I were to coach some of you guys, you might not like me, but you're going to do what? Win. win. Exactly. So for you to win in life after football is really just an extension of the success that you want to experience on the football field. It starts with the philosophy. The reason we're talking about community service and community engagement is because every successful person that you see, no matter what their profession is, how many of us have heard of Bill Gates? What's his industry and area of success? Microsoft. Microsoft. How many of us have heard of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation? Right? So what are they doing? They go into communities and do good or bad? Good. They want to do good with their money, right? Yeah. And so that's their approach. How many of us ever heard of, outside of football, Tiger Woods? How many of us heard of the Tiger Woods Foundation? You have, right? And so these are outlets that they use to engage in a community to help support. I'm giving you those references because as successful individuals, our philosophy is based upon a simple thing. We win when we serve. How many of you have ever heard of this statement, the greatest among you will be the servants? Anybody ever heard that? No? Have you ever heard this thing called the Bible? <laughs> You never heard that? You know, okay, so here's this little story and just a little backdrop. My dad is a pastor, a preacher in Chicago, so I got that little backdrop. And so there were some guys who was hanging out with this guy they called Jesus. You ever heard of him? So these guys that was hanging around him, there was a few guys that hung around him. How many guys was hanging around him? Twelve, twelve guys, right. So these twelve guys, is like his team. So they were hanging out, and a couple of guys were saying, you know what, man, we just need to know who's going to be the greatest. So, so who, when you get to the kingdom, when you set this thing up that you're talking about, he was talking about the kingdom of earth, kingdom of heaven. You heard those stories? Yeah. So they were like, all right, all right, right, right. So once the kingdom gets set up, who's going to get to sit on your right hand? Who's going to get to sit on your left hand? Y'all heard that story a little bit? And so these two guys was arguing, and he said, Jesus, he was the teacher, he said, look, the greatest among you is going to be the servant. Y'all didn't hear that? That was, that was the punchline to the story, Right? Now, what does that mean? The most successful people in our community are the people who serve the community. So as athletes, how many of you know that there's somebody about this tall that's looking up to you? That could be your little brother, your nephew, your cousin. How's that? Some people in the community, they don't even, they're not even a family member. But when you come home and you have on your game jersey and you just won, you coming through the community, are they looking at you like, yeah, yeah, you all won. I'm going to be just like you, right? So how many of you know that you are an example in your community? Now, how many of us knows there are two types of examples, generally speaking? There's what, what are the two types of examples? Good. Or? Good. Now, which one are we? Good. We're good. So that's a choice that you're making, right? How many of us are making that choice not to be the one of three players that Rick Doc Walker described that came out of his town? Remember those, those other three guys who were the best? 
What were their plights? One ended up where? Jail. Jail. The other one ended up where? And the other one is what? Looking for a kidney because drug abuse. Now, what's the difference between those three and Rick Doc Walker? Say it again. He made it. Why did he make it? Stop. Come here, please. Turn to the audience. What's your name? Clannis McCoy. Clannis McCoy. So we're going to see him in the Hall of Fame one day. Yes, sir. Tell them why, what's the difference between Rick Doc Walker and those other three? Uh, the choices he made. The choices he made. How many of us know that we make choices based upon our philosophy, right? So if your coach is like, we're going to run and pound the ball down their throats all day long, my man, the running back, he's going to get 20 and 30 touches. If the coach says, we're going to run the spread, the quarterback might be airing it out more. You understand? It's based upon the philosophy. It led to choices. Thank you so much. Now, so for you all and for us, it's a simple matter of choice. And so being a, a community engaged individual is purely a matter of choice. It's recognizing I'm a part of this community. There are people who are looking up to me because I'm an athlete. And in our society, we do what to athletes? Do we elevate them or do we put them down here? Elevate. We elevate them. So you automatically have stepped into a role where you're very visible. So you're already an example in your community. Now it just becomes what choice are you going to make? What type of an example are you going to be? And that just becomes a part of your resume, your dossier. That becomes a part of your story. How many of us have a story? All of us have a story. How many of us want people to know our story? How many of us want the journalists to write about our story? So you choose your philosophy and to be a community leader is a good part of your story. Because now you're making choices that says, I can't be a bad example because these little people are watching. Older people are watching. How many of us know that for some of the people who didn't make it, you're their hope. They're living vicariously through you. You've ever heard that statement? How many of us have uncles or aunts or mothers, grandmothers that want us to be successful because they didn't have the same opportunity? That should be everybody, right? So we are here to encourage you all on your journey. You're already successful, okay? You are already successful because you made a choice to put on this jersey to accept a philosophy, to take a band of brothers who you didn't know before you came to that high school, many of you, who you're not bound by by blood, but you said, hey, to help my team win, because I know all of you all are team focused, right? Yeah. Everybody's team focused. Who's the individuals? Good, no hands. We're all team focused. So I want you to understand this. You are already successful. Now you just want to continue to make successful choices, and you carry that into your engagement in your community. And that's why we're here, because understand this. I'm going to leave you with this principle. All of us have heard, had a dad, right? D-A-D. -D. Here's an acronym. Community service is important because we get paid in society for a few things. We get paid based upon the degree of difficulty of what we do. Can everybody put on the football field, uh, a uniform and play on the field? Yeah. Can everybody do what LeBron James does? No. He gets paid very well, right? Yeah. Right. So we get paid based upon the degree of difficulty of what we do. The next A is for our ability. Now, everybody that gets on a football field, are they outstanding? No. So you have to work at becoming outstanding, right? So your ability, who determines your ability? Me. You. You all in the back, who determines your ability? Me. You do. So the degree of difficulty, our ability to do it, and the difficulty to replace us. Now that's the same thing that determines how much you play in football. That determines how many letters you get. That determines how many scouting lists you're on, right? The degree of difficulty is high. You want to be an all-star running back? Degree of difficulty? High, right? All-star linebacker? Degree of difficulty? High, right? Now next is your ability. What's going to be your ability level? How many of us are going to play at a 5? How many of us want to play at a 10? 10 being the best, right? How many of us want to make it so difficult for our coach to find anybody else to do our job that we get to play every down that we're physically capable of playing? How many of us want that? So just think of that, your dad approach, and that extends off the football field, that extends into the community. There's nobody who can come into your community and speak to and inspire the young people like you. There's nobody that has your resume, there's nobody that has your story. I'm going to leave you with this. Each and every one of you, 
are one of 400 million. What do I mean by that? Say that again. 400 million people trying to go to the NFL? Nah, not quite. How many people, in, let's just, let me get, how many people live in the United States of America? Somewhere are just over 300 million, all right? So, there's nobody just like you in America, right? How many people live on this planet? Seven billion. Is there anybody like you on the planet? All right. Now, how many of you have a twin? One person in the room, two people have a twin. When your mom and dad got together, this is a little biology. When mom and dad got together, a little chemistry happened between them. Dad sent a seed into mom, and it was about 400 million little troops looking for mom's fertile egg to bring you here. How many made it? One. one. You are one in 400 million just from the start. Okay? So you're already successful. Now you choose to write your story and community service is a part of your story because how many of you, your parents taught you everything you know, everything, nothing you learned outside of your parents, okay? So that's not true. How many of us had teachers to teach us some things? How many of us have coaches teaching us some things? How many of us had somebody just on the block that sat on the porch and sometimes when I came home, they just said something to me to inspire me? That's your community. Now, how many of you, if I gave you a full scholarship to the college of your choice right now today, would come back and say thank you? Okay. So, think of your tuition in life for what you've learned coming from your community like that scholarship. And so community service and community engagement is purely your way and opportunity to say thank you. How many of us, if you receive a gift, are going to say thank you? Well, that's what we want you to remember as it relates to community service. It's a simple thank you. And otherwise, you don't necessarily have any other opportunity to give back. So community service and community engagement and your leadership at it is your way of saying thank you. So how many of us remember, Dad, what's the D? Degree. degree. The degree of difficulty. What's the A? Ability. Our ability. And what's the D? The difficulty to replace us. How many of us want to be unreplaceable? Well, that's why you got to give back to your community because you are already unreplaceable and nobody else can do it but you. Give yourselves a hand. <laughs>